Hi, I'm Cassie from Old Mill Quilting, and in this tutorial, we're going to show you how to make your very own lampshade. These lampshades come together really quick and easily. They make great personalized gifts, or perhaps even a new shade for your own home. The best part about them is there's no sewing involved. Let's get started. As well as the kit and all its contents, here are the other items that you will need to complete the lampshade. Fabric, a pair of scissors, a grey lead pencil, a ruler, and a weighted item such as a phone or a can of soup out of the kitchen. So this is the kit we're going to use. In today's video, we're going to be making a 20 centimetre lampshade. So let's open it up and see what's inside. So here's what's in the kit. Each kit contains the PVC backing that we'll use to stick the material to. This is what creates the shape of your lampshade. We have our two metal rings. This is what we roll our fabric onto, and this creates the stability for the lampshade. We have our double-sided tape. Now this is an industrial strength double-sided tape, not your ordinary double-sided tape that you get from the supermarket. We have this little adapter piece. This is probably the most important piece in the entire kit. This is what converts the lampshade hold to an Australian size light globe. So the first thing you definitely need to do is to pop this on the inside. It just sits in here and clicks in. Just like that. So now that's done and we're not going to lose it. We also have this little finishing tool that we're going to use right at the end just to tuck under all the seams and make the lampshade nice and tidy and making it look really professional. And the last but not least, we have our instruction sheet. Now this instruction sheet is really good. They have very, very clear instructions and each step has its own picture so you can see exactly what you need to do. So let's get started. So first things first, we need to take out our PVC roll. Now this PVC roll has been heat tested. So you can be sure that as you've got your light globe sitting in the shade, it's not gonna catch fire. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is attach our fabric to our PVC. So to do that, we're going to take our piece of fabric, we're gonna lay it right side down on the table. So that means we want the top of the fabric facing the table. We're then gonna grab the PVC and we're gonna choose the piece of the fabric that we wanna use. If you've got a directional piece of fabric or something with a specific picture, for example, the owls over here, you might need to be a bit more picky with where you place the PVC. But this piece is nice and consistent, so we don't have to worry about it. So what I'm gonna do is roll out the PVC to see the length. All right. Once I've decided on the place I wanna put it, I'm gonna grab a pencil. So I'm just going to mark the top of the PVC so I know my starting place. Just like that. It doesn't need to be huge. It's just a guide. So after you've drawn your, your nice little guide line in the corner, I'm just going to take the PVC away for a second. And I'm going to rule one straight line along the grain of the fabric. Now this is just going to ensure that when the lampshade is rolled out, it's nice and straight with the pattern on the design. So this next part of the process is probably the most fiddly part of the entire thing. What we're going to do is roll our PVC onto the fabric. I'm going to take away the backing. to reveal the sticky PVC underneath. I'm only gonna unroll a few inches at a time, tuck it under and line up my PVC with the corners that I used earlier. Doesn't matter if it's not perfect. This whole technique is really forgiving. All right, now as you can see, it wants to roll back up on itself. This is annoying for the moment, but trust me, you'll appreciate it later. So all we need to do is put something heavy on the end to stop it from rolling as you're putting the fabric on the PVC. Phone works great, or just grab a can out of the cupboard 
can of tomatoes, can of beans, doesn't matter. Anything heavy with a bit of weight to it will do the trick. So then all I'm going to do is keep my fabric nice and straight, nice and flat. I'm going to slowly unpeel the back of the PVC and roll down the fabric. Trying to stay as long that pencil mark that you made as best you can, but don't stress too much if you happen to come off it a little bit. If you make a little bit of a mistake, just roll back, readjust, and keep going. So now, as you can see, we've rolled the whole piece of PVC out onto the fabric. Make sure you give it a really good hard press down. Make sure the entire piece is nice and connected. Excellent. Now, if you're following along with our instructions, we're currently up to here, step number four. Okay. Now, this is the only piece of extra information where we don't follow the pattern, and I'll tell you why. We're going to add a tiny little bit of extra material to the end of this piece here. This is because of the seam join here. If we don't add this extra fabric, we end up with a raw edge on the seam. It really doesn't look very professional and it tends to fray and look horrible. So we add our extra little piece of fabric so we get up a nice rolled edge and it looks really professional as an end result. So here's what you need to do. We're going to take a ruler and we're going to measure about two centimeters from the end of the PVC out onto the fabric. Doesn't have to be exact, it's just an approximate. So I'm going to do about two centimeters out here. And I'm going to rule a straight line all the way across. Now, I'm going to come down two centimeters of the PVC this way, and then come out about approximately three millimeters onto the fabric. Only a little bit, but it's enough. And I'm gonna join this dot up to my line. And join the dot to the PVC. Okay. And we're gonna do exactly the same thing to the other side. So I come down the PVC about two centimeters Come out onto the fabric about three millimeters, join it up, and then join it to my gray lead line at the top. Again, don't worry if it's not 100% specific, it doesn't matter. It's just giving you that little bit extra to work with for right at the end. So now we're up to cutting. What we're going to do is cut directly along the edge of the PVC. Don't worry about any seam allowances. The seam allowance is included already on the PVC. It's hard to see on the video, but there's actually a little line right about here, and it's what they call the kiss cut line. That is our seam allowance. It'll all make sense in just a couple of minutes, but first we're gonna cut. So you're gonna cut all the way along the PVC, all the way along the edge, all the way along up to here, until you get to your little gray lead line that we've added in. You gotta stop at your dot, come out the three millimeters, continue along the gray lead line, along the gray lead line, along the gray lead line, come back in and continue on. So once you've finished cutting, you should end up with something that looks a little bit like this. So the next part of the process is to reveal our seam allowances. So if you feel along the end of your um, PVC here, you'll find the kiss cut line. I'm going to fold it back. It's going to snap and crack and make all kinds of horrible noises, but don't worry, that's just the glue releasing from the fabric. All the way along. And then we can peel this off. Now, you don't want to rip this in one swift motion like pulling off a band-aid. We want it to be nice and smooth. So I'm going to peel from the inside out and take my time. Reason is I want to avoid getting too many frays on the fabric. Little bits are okay, but not too much. 
So once you've peeled off from one side, you turn it around and do exactly the same to the other side. And now we have our exposed seam allowance. From here, you just want to grab a pair of scissors and just snip any of the larger frays to get them out of the way. It's easier to get rid of them now than it is later. So just go all the way around and snip your frays and then we'll be getting out our two rings. Once you've snipped off the larger frays, we're going to be working with the end of the PVC that has the added extra material to it. We're going to take our roll of tape and we're going to put a single line of tape along the edge of the PVC as close as you can without going onto the material. All the way along the end. Doesn't matter if it's not perfect, you won't see this part. Snip the end. Snip the end. Then we're going to peel off the top of the double sided tape to make it sticky. And now I'm going to fold over my extra fabric to create my nice rolled edge. So I'm going to start in the middle, pull it tight and slowly make my way out to the end. Stick it down all the way across. And there's our nice rolled edge. Now I need to put one more line of tape directly on top of the fabric, again as close to the edge as I can from the end of the PVC to the end of the PVC. Now it's important here, we don't want to take off the top end of this tape just yet. We don't want it to be sticky, otherwise it's going to attach itself to everything. So we're going to leave that for that, that like that for now, let him roll up, and now we're going to get out our two rings. Once you've got your two rings, we're going to add the tape to them and make them sticky. I suggest you start with this one here. The reason being, once the double-sided tape is on it and it's all sticky, you can put it down on the table face down like that, and it's not going to attach itself to anything. If you do this one first and then put it down, it's going to be stuck. All right, so we're going to start with this one. I'm going to get my tape and I'm going to put the tape in the middle of the ring, just like that. Okay, now I'm going to roll the tape all the way around the ring, all the way back to where we started. Now we want our tape to meet as close as we can without it overlapping because that makes it too difficult to get the top side of the tape off. Cut that. Put the tape to one side. Now I'm going to pinch the tape around the ring. Just like that. All the way around. Now that you've pushed the tape all the way around the circle, we're going to peel off the top layer of the double-sided tape, just like this, all the way around. And we end up with one very sticky ring. Now that you've placed your sticky ring on the table, remembering to place it small circle side down, we're going to do exactly the same to the other ring. Tape all the way around the edge, push it down and peel it off. We've now got two sticky rings. So here comes the fun part. We're actually going to roll the lampshade together now. So we take our PVC back again. I've laid it out with something heavy at one end to keep it nice and flat for me. And again, anything you've got in the cupboard, your phone will work perfectly well. We want to start at the end that we didn't add anything to. So just the raw edge down the other end is where we're going to start. Here's where you need to decide whether you want a lampshade or a pendant because that depends on where we're going to put these rings. If you want a lampshade and you have a directional piece of fabric, this ring needs to be facing inwards. Okay. If you want a pendant, which is one that hangs from the ceiling, this ring will face outwards. Okay. If your piece is non-directional, it doesn't matter. 
but if you've got a directional piece of fabric, you need to keep that in mind. So we're going to place both rings on the edge of the fabric, sorry, on the edge of the PVC, as close as we can to the edge without going onto the fabric. And if you've got long hair, I suggest you tie it up. This is a little bit tricky to get them placed, but once you've got them, it actually rolls really easy. Here's where that annoying roll in the PVC comes in handy, because essentially it rolls itself. Once your rings are in place, we're going to roll. So I'm just keeping both ends nice and even, controlling the rings from down on the fabric, making sure that they stay on the PVC and they don't make their way onto the fabric itself. Slowly all the way down to the end and then we're almost finished. We want to stop just a few millimetres from the end so we can take the double-sided tape off our fabric to close it up. And see, we're almost there. From about here, I can get rid of my scissors, peel off my double-sided tape. Here it comes. And allow it to roll straight into itself. Just like that. Now that it's all rolled up, I'm going to give it a really good press on the seam on the table. Don't press the seam from the top because you'll dint the lampshade. So the seam line is on the table and I'm just giving it a really good press to seal it. And here is our drum shaped lampshade. There's only one more bit to go and then we're finished. With our nice drum shaped lampshade, we've now got a few little cuts to make before we finish it off. We need to take our scissors and I'm going to cut a straight line straight at these prongs so that once we're ready to fold the seams in, that's not in our way. It can go around the edge. So there's three prongs on this side of the lampshade. I'm going to make three cuts. And there's two more cuts we need to make. See here where we've added our nice rolled edge, we've also added a bit of bulk to the lampshade here. If we were to roll this underneath, it's going to be quite thick and it's not going to fit underneath as nicely. So what we're going to do is take away some of the extra bulk. This extra little flap here in the middle, I'm going to take that out. So I'm going to cut straight down the edge of the seam here in the middle and then along the bottom. And I've taken out that little inner flap. I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the other side. Down the seam and then across the middle and it's just taken out some of that extra bulk. So now we're ready to roll in our edges. We're going to just tuck them all under using your fingers just to start it off. Do that to both sides just to make it nice and even. You can see how our cut makes the fabric fold nicely around the prongs. And then we're going to get out our little finishing plastic finishing tool that we had earlier and finish it off. So here's our little finishing tool from the start. You can use this however you like. It's got a serrated edge. And it's got the two smooth edges coming to a point. I personally like to use the serrated edge to start off with. And I'm going to place this under on the fabric. And I'm going to push the fabric up underneath the ring. And that will give us a nice, clean, finished lampshade. We do this all the way around. And then all the way around on the other side. And we're finished. And here's our finished lampshade. This was the 20 centimeter round lampshade. It's great for bedside tables or perhaps in the sewing room. They also make great gifts to be in a child's bedroom or something like that. We have a range of different sizes and shapes available. If you'd like to head over to our website, oldmillquilting.com.au, you'll be able to see our full range. Thanks for watching.